Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2013. In this section I want to talk to you about backup, auto save and auto recover. And we're going to look at backup first. And when I'm talking about backup here, I'm talking about backup, if you like, in the longer term. In the next section we're going to start to create presentations. And as you create your presentations, you'll be saving them presumably on a drive within the device that you're using. And when you finish doing what you're doing for the day, whether you're at work or at home, you switch your computer off. You come back again tomorrow or the next time you're going to work on this course, and you're going to open up those presentations and carry on working on them. Well, what if when you come back tomorrow, your computer won't start? What if when you come back to work next week, somebody has stolen the computer you were using, or perhaps somebody else has used it and accidentally deleted, or maybe even deliberately deleted, all of the presentations that you were working on? What do you do about that? Well, what you do about that is that you always have at least one backup copy of the work that you're doing and it is on a device other than the one that you are working on. Now at the time of writing this there are many options for taking backup copies of the work that you're doing. You could for instance just copy the work to a memory stick, a USB memory stick which will probably hold several gigabytes of data which may be hundreds of presentations and which maybe will cost a few dollars or a few pounds from your local computer store. Alternatively, you could have an external drive device. Again, it could be a USB device, which may hold up to one or two terabytes of data, which is probably going to be millions of presentations. And again, that will only cost $50, $100, 50 pounds, something like that. So there really is no excuse for not keeping copies of the work that you're doing. Nowadays many people work in such a way that as they're working they have an external device that is copying what they're doing to the external device pretty much as they go. So it's doing a sort of live backup of the data in real time. And that's a good option, particularly if what you're doing is going to be of great value to you. From my point of view, what I do is I take a backup copy of everything without fail at the end of the day, keep it in two places. I keep it on my own network so that it's safe at hand, but I also put a copy in, actually goes in the boot of my car in a locked box. So you really need to make sure that you keep backup copies of your work. And there is no built-in intrinsic feature of PowerPoint 2013 to do this for you. There isn't some magic tool that we can switch on, one option we can click somewhere, that will take off-site, as they're called, backup copies of what you're doing. That part of it is entirely up to you. For the rest of this section we're going to be talking about a pair of features called Auto Save and Auto Recover and they are there to deal with an associated issue and I'll come back to that in just a moment but I would like to point out that they are not there to solve the problem that we've been talking about. They are not there as a tool for taking backups at the end of the day or making sure that you've got a copy of a presentation somewhere else. They're there for pretty much a different purpose altogether. So let's look at what autosave is about. No matter how safe your working environment, things always go wrong. For example, if you're using a PC rather than a laptop, there may be a power failure. And if you get a power failure, your PC stops working, then the presentation you're working on may be in an indeterminate state. If that happens, how do you recover? What have you lost? Have you got to start the presentation again? Another situation that might occur is what happens if PowerPoint itself fails? The current versions of the Office products, the Office 2013 versions, I've been using for some time and I consider them to be relatively, for what is new software at this time, extremely stable pieces of software. But I know that as with any other software, there will come a time when that software will fail. It may not even be the fault of the manufacturer. It may be something else on my PC that conflicts with it and causes it to fail. But if it fails and I get one of those terrible not responding type messages, again, maybe my only option is to switch my PC off. If I'm part way through working on a presentation, how much of it have I lost? And this is exactly where autosave fits in. So. 
into Backstage View, click on Options, go to the Save page, and one of the options, not far from the top there, Save Auto Recover Information every, I've got it here, 10 minutes. And what that means is that every 10 minutes while I am working on a presentation, a copy of it is saved automatically. If PowerPoint fails or the electricity fails or there's some other interruption to my work that isn't planned and controlled by me, then when I restart PowerPoint, it can revert back to that auto-saved version. And that in turn means that at most with this setting, I will lose 10 minutes worth of work. So it will go back to the last point at which the presentation I'm working on was auto-saved. Now, I can't really think of any good reason why you wouldn't have save auto recover information set. In the past, particularly with older computers that struggled a bit more to run the more modern versions of Microsoft Office, people would say, well, auto save slows me down a bit, or every 10 minutes everything seems to grind for a halt while it does an auto save. Nowadays, I think that tends to be a lot less of a problem. So you really would need an extremely good reason not to have auto save set on. You can adjust how frequently you run it, and if you just click inside there, the number you can enter for the number of minutes can be anything from 1 to 120. I think auto-saving every one minute may be overdoing things a little, and auto-saving every 120 may be a bit too infrequent, because you could effectively lose two hours of work. 10 is the default figure, and it's the one that I tend to run with. Now there's one other option there associated with autosave and that is the file location where the autosaved copies are kept. It's set to the default, mine is here set to the default, there's a different one for each user of the device you're using. I generally don't change this but if you wanted to save that information somewhere else you could of course save it on a separate device if you wanted to, there's no reason not to then you can change that location if for some reason you want to do that although of course if you were going to use a different device it would have to be a device that is connected and available all the time that you're using PowerPoint 2013 so what would the sequence of events be? Let's suppose you're working on a presentation in PowerPoint 2013 and it's on a PC and you have a power failure. Everything just grinds to a halt, the lights go out, you sort out the power fault, you get the power going again, you switch your PC on again and you start PowerPoint 2013. As soon as you start it, PowerPoint realizes that there is autosave information and it also realizes that you didn't successfully save the last thing you were working on. It then says to you, you didn't finish what you were doing properly last time, you didn't close the presentation you were working on properly, things seem to stop unexpectedly. Do you want to auto recover from the last saved copy of the presentation you were working on? If for some reason it's got the whole story wrong and you realize, no, no, that's not what happened at all, and in any case, what I was working on I don't want anymore, you can just say no and carry on as normal. Whereas if in fact there was some sort of catastrophe and you do need to go back to that auto saved version, you just click yes, carry on, and it will let you continue with the auto saved copy of your presentation. It happens to me from time to time, and so far it's proved an excellent way of recovering from that kind of disaster. Now, not so long ago, Microsoft added an additional twist on this, which also has proved very useful to some people. When you have been working on a presentation for some time, and you want to close the presentation, you normally get a question, as we've seen before, do you want to save changes? You'll usually say yes. Occasionally you might have made some changes to a presentation and you've changed your mind and you've thought, no, I don't want to save those changes, and you might say no. But something that happens to everybody eventually, uh, or at least everybody I know it's happened to, is that you've been working on a presentation, you close it, it says, do you want to save the changes? And you accidentally click no. Now, this is a bit of a worst case scenario, really, because you've just appeared to have thrown away all the work that you've been doing by saying, no, I don't want to save those changes, whereas, in fact, you really should have saved those changes. One of the other options that's available here can help you to fix that particular problem. Just below the option with the 
interval time on it, the 10 minutes in this case, there's another box that I've checked that says keep the last auto saved version if I close without saving. And what that means is that everything's fine, you close a particular presentation, it says you want to save changes, you say no. In the past, before this option was introduced, PowerPoint would have thrown away the auto-saved copy. Now it keeps it. And if, having done that, you close PowerPoint or you come back to PowerPoint later and you think, oh, no, I said no to saving those changes and I really wanted to keep them, there is a way of going back to that last auto-save version. And I'm going to show you that now. So it's pretty straightforward. You go into Backstage View click on open and down at the bottom there is recover unsaved presentations open a recent presentation that was closed without saving and it really is as simple as that I hope you never have to do that I must confess I've had to do it once or twice now at that point we've got to a situation where we can now start to create some good PowerPoint presentations and that's what happens from now on on the course Many of the things that we've covered have been essential aspects of understanding the PowerPoint 2013 interface, understanding something about the ribbon, the quick access toolbar and so on. But of all the things we've covered, in many ways those related to backup and auto save and auto recover are the most important. So although this isn't actually an exercise for you to do, I do want you to make sure that you have those auto save options set. You may choose to tune or tweak them later on in your use of PowerPoint, but make sure they're set. They may well have never been changed and just be at the default settings, which is fine. But it is absolutely essential that you get those settings correct and that you make arrangements for those backups to a different device so that you don't lose your work in the longer term. So in the next section we're going to make our first presentation. Please join me for that.